my house. This woman arrived at her apartment. Yeah. What the hell do you call this here? Yes, yes, I I am so okay, the one didn't you know I was coming if you're so good. You, yes. Get the f out. Get the from cheater surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made you feel the way she does. You don't do this to the people that love you. I can live with the truth, but I can't live with lies. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. This is not the way we're supposed to end. I will get to the truth. I know this isn't easy. I can't take it anymore. I knew something was going down, though, right? This has been a lie the whole time. I'm going to throw up. Oh, hell no! Here we go. I see you right there. I want a hard target search. Is this what you thought to me tell with your guard? There he is. Get your hands off me! Get the camera off you. Knock that off. I saw you on the side. This is the price of justice. This is like not how this is supposed Whatever, to work. Just go. Done. Go with him. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I do love you. I love you too. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. I'm Joey Greco, and thanks for tuning in to another captivating episode of Cheaters. Henrietta Trotter is a woman concerned that her husband seeks out other sources of affection. Saddened by his distance as of late, Henrietta asks cheaters to verify her suspicions. Henrietta Trotter, age 48, a waitress deeply concerned about the recent changes in her husband's life. About a year ago, Richard lost his oldest son to an accident at the lake and things have just kind of changed since then. As much as I want to support him, I'm not sure how to handle it because some of the things that are going on with us right now don't make a lot of sense to me. I've tried to talk to him about the death of his son and he pushes me away. He says, I don't understand. He wants to go see spiritual people for this kind of stuff. And anything he can see on TV that has to do with the supernatural, he watches. It's like he's obsessed with it. He does crazy stuff. He'll, he'll just sit there and record the static on the, on the TV. And then he'll have, when we do talk, it's because he wants me to listen to these things. And if I don't hear what he thinks I should hear, we'll get in a big blowout argument. When I think he should be at places he tells me he's gonna be at, he's not there. And if I come in the room and he's on the phone, he'll hang up immediately and it kind of, angers me because he's pushing me away and I've been there through his accident. I was there through his son's death. But I suspect there's another woman. I truly do. Just because of his behavior. But it's either going to be my way or the highway. Because I'm not going to be second pedestal to another woman. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Ricky Trotter, age 51, a plumber suspected of tinkering with other women's plumbing. Investigation day three, Cheaters Intelligence dispatches field agents to the suspect and client's home. Staking out the restful residence for a spell, agents catch a glimpse of suspect Ricky Trotter as he exits the residence on his way out for the day. After hopping into his van, Trotter departs the scene. P.I.s track the suspect several miles away to a strange residence where he picks up an unknown female companion. Once she's safely buckled in, Trotter and his passenger make their way to a nearby eatery. Once inside, the couple grab a booth. Trotter then pulls out a piece of clothing, which is later identified as a sweater belonging to his late son, Robert. After clasping hands over the garment and sharing what appears to be an intimate moment, the two hold each other for solace. Later, Trotter pays and they depart. After a brief pursuit, the pair arrive at the companion's residence where they disappear inside. After a brief respite behind the closed doors, the suspect emerges and heads home, ending this day of investigation. Investigation day five, 
Cheater's operatives form a perimeter around the Trotter home. Agents surveying the scene spot Trotter exiting with a handful of bags. He loads up his van and takes off. Trotter arrives a few miles away at a thrift store where he gathers the bags and heads inside. Upon getting top dollar for his used garments, the suspect hops back into his van and returns to his place of residence, where his companion, whose identity remains withheld, waits patiently for him. A background check on the companion reveals she freelances as a psychic. The twosome hug hello, but the uneasy suspect quickly ushers her inside. Sometime later, the pair emerge and make their way to a nearby park. The suspect and his companion walk the baseball field, reliving some of the glory days. Then, Trotter and his female friend retire to the bleachers. After some fun in the sun, these two sluggers walk back to the suspect's van and return to the Trotter residence, where they once again vanish inside. Later, the soothsayer resurfaces and leaves just before Henrietta is due home from her double shift. Investigation Day 9. Continuing their vigil outside the Trotter's residence, ops catch a glimpse of Henrietta leaving for work in the suspect's van. Soon after she leaves, the self-proclaimed clairvoyant arrives and enters. Using hidden internal surveillance cameras set up by Henrietta, PIs capture footage of the spiritualist doing a tarot card reading for Trotter. Trotter seems distraught by the reading, but while consoling his internal pain, the two seem to find an external outlet in the form of a lovemaking session. Trotter skirts the truth in this previously recorded phone conversation with Henrietta. With proof substantiating the suspect's infidelity, Cheater's investigators end the inquiry. Coming up, the confrontation. With substantial confirmation of an affair, Cheater shows Henrietta the proof of her concerns. Deeply troubled by the potential findings, Henrietta prepares for her greatest fear. Henrietta, thank you for making yourself available to us this afternoon. The reason that we contacted you when we did was specifically because we have information that is very crucial to the job that you asked us to do. Are you ready to look at that information now? Yes, I am. As we began our investigation, we were outside of your apartment. You had left for work. Ricky exits, gets into his van, where he was followed until he arrived at another apartment complex. He's outside for a moment or two. A young lady exits gets into the van. Our detectives continued their pursuit until they arrive at a restaurant. But they're walking quite closely together and it appears that they're holding hands as they go in. Once inside, they both take seats in the same booth. During their conversation, Ricky produces what looks to be some type of garment. The two of them seem like they're involved in, in an in-depth conversation regarding this article of clothing. They embrace. That's, he pays as they leave. That's not just a small embrace. And I see now where our money might be going. Do you remember the day that you took the van to work? Yes, I do. Here you are, exiting. Not long after you left, this woman arrived. She goes inside. 
we were able to capture this with a camera that you placed. There are candles lit. She looks like a gypsy. She seems to be doing some type of card reading. At some point during this so-called reading, the events start to turn a little frisky. Mm. He goes, gets them some drinks. They retire to another portion of the house, and they're gone for enough time. I know. That on his return He's would got... evidently require him oh changing into a bathroom. He's done lost his mind. No, not at my house. No. Uh-uh. I'm not going to have that. I was so hoping that it wasn't this. So hoping this is not the Ricky that I've been involved with for six years. Not at all. I don't know this person. Henrietta, the reason that we contacted you when we did, a few hours after you left for work, this woman arrived at your apartment. Let me check with our detective. Hey, it's Joey. They're still at your place. They've been there for about two hours. We're headed there now. There's a detective on the corner. All right, we'll see you in a second. Okay, here we go. Everyone stay together. Do you, do you have your keys in case the door's locked? Yes, I do. Okay. Coming up, the conclusion. They embrace. No, not at my house. What the hell do you call this? Here, who are you she supposed to be? Helping, me. helping you what? She's helping me find Robert. Robert, I knew Robert. Who the is she? She don't know Robert. Bitch, you get the out of my house before I tear you. Up. No, 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 hey, you, hey, hey. you, no. No, no, you need to get out now. She's just huh? helping me we get were some just clothes. Helping, That's it. Helping him. Oh, no, no, we're not talking just... about this right here. We're no, talking about the relationship. I'm talking about what I saw on video. You two kissing. You in my house. Huh? Hey, hey, hey. Huh? That, that, what? That, what that? What? Happy. Happy. What? You get out now, lady. Hey, get out if you know what's good for you. Yes. Hey, you ain't locked. Why are you psychic? Huh? You're psychic. Okay, then why the didn't you know I was coming if you're so good? Huh? You're so you didn't know I was coming, huh? You aren't gonna be around long anyway. What difference does it make? What do you mean I wasn't gonna be around long anyway? It ain't like everything's all hunky dory between us. No, it ain't, mother. But you can get the out too. Go with your skank. You know, get the out. Okay, Just get the out. You'll be trying. Get the out. I told you you would be betrayed. Here's the sign yeah, of it right here. Yeah, bitch, get the out. Here's the sign hey, of it right here. You too. You get the out. He's being betrayed here. You yes. get the out. How get the out. How do you figure it out? He's being betrayed by his wife. Come on, we'll go. go. But you're the one that's go on, cheating on him. Go on, go on, go. But you're the one that's cheating with him on his wife. Yeah, yeah we are. Yeah. We're cheating. No, we're not. Well, I thought we was. Go on. Get out. Get out of here. I'm up. Don't you come back for not even your clothes. Get the out. Oh, so, so. See you, bitch. See you, sucker. Well, I certainly, I sure don't know if we can control whether he returns or not, but if you'd like a detective to stay here, we can certainly make one available for you. I think it's going to be okay if one could just stay for a few, maybe 20, 30 minutes, he'll be fine. I don't think he realizes the consequence of the situation. I think that more than anything, his ego is upset because he got caught because he's so into, I'm not a cheater. I don't know what, I don't know what they're saying, but that he would be betrayed. Your wallet? Yeah. Listen, 
we need to talk about this. Why? Why? Yeah. Because why would you go to somebody that you don't know? What do you know about her? What How did you mean? Me do? What was I helping you do? I took care of you while you got hurt. I paid the bills. I took on a second job. What did you do? But betray me. The one that got betrayed here, oh, dear, she was, was me. Trying to help me. Okay. Talk to, Robert. talk to Robert in my house, in your robe, kissing her, hugging her, taking her to the mother restaurant. Well, All the money that I make because you're is supposed to be laid up sick. Well, Who the do you think you're with? It wasn't planned that way, it just happened. Okay, so what are you saying? Are you saying that you want to work it out with me or you want to go with a skank that's just going to take you for your money because, baby, everybody knows you got a settlement coming. So and you ain't all that, baby. Let me tell well, you that. She ain't all that either, bro. I know she ain't. So you know what you got here, and I'm willing to be there for you. But if you're not going to listen and you're not going to be there and be honest with me about the whole thing, then you need to get your stuff and get out. But I thought that our relationship went further than that. If you're willing to, we'd be happy to provide some, some counseling for you. Okay, that's fine. And that's something that we will do in the future. Okay, that's fine. Another thing, I'm going to clean this up, and I'd like for you to help me up to clean it, because that's not my job to do. But you're never, ever, ever to contact her again. Uh -huh. All right, guys, let's clear out. Let them have some time. I think our job's done. After the confrontation, Henrietta seeks professional advice on how to proceed. At the end of the show, Cheaters reports on her decision. But now, Mary Proles is a former client recovering from her emotional breakup. She comes to Cheaters to elaborate on the night she discovered her boyfriend's betrayal. Mary Proles, age 32. Mary expands on her actions during one of the most memorable confrontations in Cheater's storied history. I want, I want to kill him. I want to hurt him. And it was only because of my strength and, and my faith in God that I just held back. This man, I mean, Daryl, he proposed to me told me he loved me, told me he promised me the world, and he lied to me. I was hurt. And that to me is just the worst thing you can do to somebody is lie to them. Listen! Listen! I'm your fiance! Who are you doing, Daryl? Don't touch me! Who is she? Who is she? Nobody, nobody. Nobody. Did she hit on me? No, no, Did she shake her hair? Did you take me dancing? What the going on, Daryl? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who is she? Who are you? Derek called me every day, about three or four times a day. Uh, he would come to my job, try to send me flowers, try to send candy, told me that, um, that he loved me, that he just for me to take him back, that he'll do better, that again, that he didn't cheat or lie to me, that she was just a friend, and I told him no. I told him I wasn't having it, and I was through. Look, come out here and let no. me talk to you. Why, why are you putting me in the middle of this stuff? You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to do this. She didn't do this. All you had to do was you call me. This. Call you, I'm trying to call you, dear. Your phone. I'm answering your phone every no. time you call me. Well, just give All me right. my ring back. I'll no, give I'm it to somebody get else. You, this yo, is mine. Give no, me my you, ring back. I'm the... You're not going to come out here no. and talk to me. You're give me my ring back. That's what I want right now. I always loved Daryl. I wish him the best. But he was not the one for me, and I wasn't the one for him. He hurt me. He did a lot of things that was unnecessary, but I don't hate him. It's better that we take our separate ways. We are a bit, we're still cordial, but he knows that it will never be the same between us ever again, and that's for the best. Henrietta Trotter affirms that her emotions are all over the place right now. She blames the so-called psychic for manipulating her husband into an affair and playing on his fragile state. She doesn't let Ricky off the hook, however, stating, I'm his wife. I've been by his side through all of this. He should have known better than to get involved with a charlatan, and he should have trusted me more. I don't deserve this. Ricky Trotter now admits to the disregard of his relationship with Henrietta and offers a heartfelt apology. He says his excessive drinking after the death of Robert fogged his mind and left him susceptible to the psychic. 
The suspect's companion refused to take calls from Cheater's producers. <laughs>